And so, yeah, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't put all your squash in one garden to patch either. Well, hello, YouTube. My name is Joe, and welcome to my farm. Today, we're going to talk about what's growing this season. Uh, this is the end of June 2023, the foggy morning this morning. Uh, but I uh, have some time, and I thought I would share what's growing, uh, what we're growing, and uh, yeah, kind of a nice timeline for uh, for future reference. Uh, so uh, this is June of 2023, uh, and this season we have items growing in several different places on the farm, uh, just really trying to maximize our space and uh, utilize some of our open ground here. Uh, so behind me is the main veggie garden. Um, and so we're going to kind of take a look at what's growing, uh, already some successes, uh, some things learned, not really failures, but some things learned. And so let's, let's dive into it. For reference, garden pond is right down here. First thing that's growing is we always like to have going along the outside of the fence. We all have some zinnias, some different flowers. Uh, and really most of that is I use the tiller through here. Uh, so I take down these, these fence gates. Uh, then once I set it back up, I have some raw dirt there. Uh, it's nice to have that flowers there. Uh, they're really nice for, for picking. Uh, they're nice for sharing. They're nice for pollinators. Uh, so let's take a look at what is in there. So as we talk about what's growing in the garden, uh, I grow usually in rows. Uh, I'll back the tiller up into that space and then I come out. You've probably seen my, my Hiller Tiller videos, uh, Tiller Hiller. Uh, I will share that up above, but make it all in rows. They're long rows, but they work. So along this uh, high side row here, uh, we have our Swiss chard, our lettuce, uh, kale. Uh, you can see a, a trellis fence going along there. Uh, usually it has sweet peas there. Mr. Mr. Mold decided that he wanted my sweet peas, uh, but we also use that trellis fence for cucumbers. Uh, there will also be some radishes along there and that sort of thing. Uh, the next row. Uh, Right down below, uh, you can see I have a little bit of uh, onions. Uh, underneath this little netting is going to be uh, a few cabbages. Not all the cabbages, but a few of the cabbages. And that netting really kind of keeps uh, those moths from laying their, uh, their seeds. The netting actually is, is a little bit small. The cabbages this year want to get much larger, uh, but uh, it does help. Let me level you guys out. Uh, going along here, this really became a, a pretty wide row. Uh, and so you can see two different plantings of green beans down there. Uh, and so this one's just about ready to flower. These, this big one, the small one, uh, is probably uh, two and a half weeks old right now. And so went back a few days ago and kind of filled in the gaps of those. Uh, and they'll need some very fine weeding. Uh, but that is, that is what things are looking like. Uh, we'll go to this next row. Uh, at my feet, I've got just a little bit of okra. Uh, we've not had high success here at, at the farm with okra, but uh, I really enjoy okra, and so we, we continue to plant it and eat it. Uh, and then you see there's, I don't know, 18 or so uh, broccoli plants down there. Uh, and we'll, like I said, we'll walk through and look a little closer at those. Um, and then we get to the mother load. Uh, the mother load is, uh, we've got about 60, I don't know, 63 or so, uh, tomatoes and, and I mostly plant Roma tomatoes. Uh, and those are for canning and saucing. Uh, I do use cages. Uh, cages get a little bit annoying, but, uh, they... They do the job. Uh, those plants will get up three to four foot tall and uh, they, they need support, especially on a long row like this. 
Uh, stakes just, stakes are a hassle too. Uh, I've thought about doing a weave, uh, but whatever you use, it, it's, it's, it's troublesome. Um, come along here. Uh, now we have a roll of peppers. Uh, start out with initially 30 different types of peppers. Um, I shouldn't say we had about 30 different plants. Uh, I think we're now down to about 28 plants. Uh, and probably 20 of those being just good old green peppers. Uh, people like peppers. Uh, if we grow more than we need, uh, they get shared. And so that's that row. And then this final row here is all the extras. So uh, extra plant zucchini comes up in a hill, we put it here. Uh, tomato didn't have a spot, we put it there. Uh, you can see some broccoli down closer, uh, you know, cabbage. I think those are beets that really, that really weedy spot there. Uh, and then some more cabbage down yonder. So let's walk this way, kind of give you an idea of what, what things are looking like all along there. See all the broccoli, see the beans, everything's looking pretty tidy. Brings us to this end of the garden. Uh, this is initially my perennial end of the garden and my goal was to only have perennials on this end. I close it off so the chickens don't have access during the winter, uh, but uh, strawberries, Strawberries are a lot of work, mostly because they're on the ground and I'm not naturally, right? Um, but we have three rows of strawberries. Uh, strawberries don't like the, the heat that we had early in May and early June. Uh, and so they have been cut back. Uh, I've rototilled them back into narrow rows and, and now we will hit them with Quite a bit of fertilizer, uh, some compost, uh, water them, and weed them, and they will start sending out runners. And I think three rows of strawberries will be enough so that we could have some good eating. Uh, maybe in a bumper year we can do some uh, jamming with them, but it'll it'll be enough where I feel like I can maintain it. Uh, when I had eight 30 foot rows, it was it was too much work. So here you see I got squash patch number one. Uh, and so I couldn't tell you which plants are where, uh, but we have a mix of butternut squash, spaghetti squash, pie pumpkins, uh, some some hubbards, uh, red and blue. Uh, and, and so we have several different patches uh, of squash this year. And so I will share those with you uh, as we go through this. But I use trellis. I use trellis on my, my spaghetti squash, my, my butternuts, pie pumpkins. And that just keeps them off the ground. It keeps them from rotting as they're kind of curing. Um, we always seem to have heavy, heavy rains towards the fall. And, and it causes rot. It causes fungus. Keeping them up off the ground really helps with that a lot. And so I just used the, the little good old, this is actually not a cattle panel. This is a, uh, um, a multi, I don't know what it is, but you can use it for hog or cattle. And so I just have several of these extra around uh, and that's pretty good. Uh, you can see I've got some zucchini there, a uh, few rows, a few plants of zucchini. My asparagus is there. And then I've got horseradish and the rhubarb, uh, and they're just doing their, their they're just doing their off-season thing where they just kind of get big, 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 uh, and you just kind of keep laying some compost to them and all the things that they need. So let's go to the next spot. We did have uh, 35 chickens that we raised this year. Uh, we started 36. We ended up losing one about five weeks into the process, but we were able to harvest 35 chickens. Uh, I didn't record any of that. I feel like the internet is pretty well loaded down with all that information. 
Uh, but once again, we processed here on the farm. Uh, we had a friend come by and uh, he gave us an extra hand and it went well. Um, I would say that our, our last harvest was at uh, about 10 and a half weeks. And what I noticed that at that it was it was mostly hens. Um, the the feathers were oilier, they're fattier, uh, and they just didn't want to make their way through the plucker. They wanted to they plucked well, but they clumped up inside that plucker. So probably need to make sure that we're we're not exceeding that ten week mark. Um, chicken run, uh, chicken run orchard. Chicken Run Orchard is doing well. Uh, I do have an old orchard on the other side of the pond. Uh, we planted that during week, week. We planted that year two uh, and it was unsuccessful. It just got hit by deer. I put fencing around it. That it wasn't the right idea. Uh, and so this is Chicken Run Orchard and Chicken Run Orchard. Oh, the kids are out. Chicken Run Orchard. Uh, we have pears, we have several different apples. Uh, we were able to add a couple, of three new apple trees down here. I'm walking backwards, so watch out. Uh, we were able to add a few more apple trees and uh, I will talk about how to secure these from your chicken successfully in another video. Uh, but man, that is a success. Uh, I do have, uh, we got a few apples off this last season and right there, that is a uh, honey crisp and that thing is loaded down. And when I say loaded down, uh, maybe it's got 25 apples on it. So not heavy, heavy, heavy. Uh, it did do some natural thinning. It made it past the frost. Uh, we did not have any pears. The pear trees look good too, uh, but that fruit it got it got hit by by frost so uh that's okay uh but that's what's growing here uh we're continuing to expand it as uh we can find some discount fruit trees um it, it's a it's a it's a tough thing to spend 40 or 50 bucks on a fruit tree and so uh if they're healthy enough and i can get them cheap enough we'll add to it uh let's go to the next spot kind of a silly thing here uh welcome to the pig pen right uh and so this is the pig pen uh and we don't have any hogs this year uh i actually have uh, made some fence posts earlier this season where i'm planning on making another pig pen uh my understanding is that you need to let pig pens rest for a few years uh and we don't have any hogs on the farm this year but i thought man uh they really worked up the soil uh, they made some deposits. Most of it is is down in that corner, uh, which is pretty a dark hole. But uh, and so we started looking through all the seeds, the seed banks. Uh, I've got sunflower seeds that are three years old. I've got pumpkin squash seeds that are that old. Uh, and so went in here, tilled up a few rows. Uh, you could see. You could see a few, some sunflowers growing in there. There is a little bit of squash. Uh, and I have been trying to add a little more light. You can see it's pretty dark in the woods, but I've been opening things up uh, with the plan of expanding uh, this this hog operation. Yeah, like maybe three hogs, not, not, not big, but. Um, and so just trying to use this space uh, if it's, if it's successful, then awesome. And if it's not, those seeds weren't getting used anyway. Uh, and so, um, so there you go, trying to maximize the space, uh, and see what grows out here. And there's definitely some fertility, whether they, they, they pooped, but they peed everywhere. And so I know that there are some fertility there. Uh, so let's go back to the last space. So. Uh, I'm looking at the counter thinking, man, this video is getting pretty long. And once again, most of my videos are really for me uh, and for my children uh, and possibly future generations. Not so much for YouTube. Uh, most of my videos go to YouTube to die. But this is the last spot. Um, 
Once again, you see some of my, my trellis system here. Uh, more squash, more of the same. Uh, you know, what they say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, and I think oftentimes I do that. Uh, I put a lot into one garden space. And so it would be much easier just to have it all in one patch. But I just don't have the open space here, guys. I don't have a field. And so, yeah, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't put all your squash in one garden to patch either. <laughs> I really like squash. I like how it, it just it just stays. You know, you can uh, you can store it for months and months and months. Uh, that's pretty great. Uh, so, yeah, more squash. This is not doing quite as well. Uh, I think some of the seed is just old. Uh, and so we're dealing with seed that is probably three or four years old. And it's just not making it. Uh, and then there's there's the potato patch, uh, and and probably some of these potatoes are getting pretty leggy. Uh, probably some of them could handle uh, being held again, but I I don't think I'm going to do it. Uh, I just don't think I I don't think I planted them wide enough to really have enough dirt to to hill up, uh, and so uh, I might run the tiller down through just to kind of limit some of the weeds. Uh, and so when it comes time to harvest, I don't have to sift through a lot of weed action. Uh, but you can definitely tell uh, which end is better fertilized. You can see that far end down there. Uh, it is a little bit higher ground, but it's just not, it's just not good soil. Uh, this has been our compost ground. This has been the, the burial ground of all butchering and, uh, um, you know, critter gets in a trap. Uh, it gets laid to rest in this space. And so ground is improving. It really is improving. But if you go down two feet, it's it's bright yellow sand. Uh, where you go 10 feet that way or 10 feet that way, it's it's potter's clay. So go figure, right? Uh, so that's what's growing. Uh, that's what's growing. Uh, and we're, we're just kind of uh, doing what we can. Uh, here are the kids, kids riding the bikes on the trails. So hey guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, not very exciting, uh, but this is what we're working on. Uh, and if I can add to this YouTube space a little bit, uh, I will bring that video to you. But uh, right now we're just, we're just kind of in a holding pattern, just kind of uh, growing food, uh, growing food, uh, doing some preps to make sure that we're ready to uh store food right preserve food and that that's a little more work so uh you guys take care that's what's growing uh june 2023 all right you guys take care now bye